Grave robber. Grave <laughs> Okay, enough of that. Welcome to West Laurel Hill Cemetery, the red-headed stepchild of the original Laurel Hill in East Falls. Though many of these names might seem unfamiliar to you, their contributions to our society certainly are not. In this tour, we will show you the final resting place of several ingenious Philadelphians. Starting with William A. Breyer. Alright, ready? <laughs> Cold. It was really good. Really good. A friend of mine was having an anniversary with his wife. He's like, I'm just gonna pick up some ice cream and head home. That's fine. That's a romantic food. And then he said this. He goes, Yeah, I'm just gonna pick up some briars. There is no reason to eat Breyer's ice cream if you're under 90 fucking years old. <laughs> Breyer's ice cream was recently voted the ice cream most likely to dribble out of your mouth during a stroke. <laughs> Every day, my 85-year-old grandmother has three doers on the rocks and a bowl of Breyer's peach ice cream. If you are wondering what they are eating, then you should be ashamed of yourself. They are called Wilbur Buds, and if you have half a conscience and a modicum of respect for your body, you will never eat a Hershey kiss again. Why is that? Because Henry Oscar Wilbur originated his Wilbur Bud in 1894, 13 whole years before Hershey stole the idea. You suck! <laughs> What on God's green earth is this? More than just friends. More than just friends. I am deeply disturbed by this. How am I going to sleep tonight? Did this man fuck his dog? I am not dead yet. But this is where you will be buried. Maybe. That is your son's name. Yes. And that is a very large family headstone. Yes. Then isn't it safe to assume that is where you will be buried? No. When you assume you make an ass out of you and me. I still think I'm right. Do you have a medicated cough drop that doesn't taste like medicine? Have I got a... You can have great taste. Great tasting taste with Ludens. Medicated cough drops with great taste in every box. While cherry, sweet and savory. Menthol cool and flavory. Honey, the way you wish with lemon or licorice. You can have great taste. Great tasting taste with Ludens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that COVID? Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny I forgot to laugh. Mary is standing in front of William Luden's grave. He invented the menthol cough drop. I appreciate him unlike these disrespectful millennial losers. Stetson Cologne, easy. 
easy to wear, hard to resist. What? Nothing, your heart just, it fits so well. It's the new style, you idiot. Haven't you ever seen Pharrell? Yikes. It's becoming increasingly harder for me to narrate these videos following pure cringe from Mary. Anyway, John B. Stetson, the originator of the cowboy hat, began manufacturing his chapeaus in 1865. The Stetson factory operated in Kensington off of Germantown Avenue. At its height, Stetson produced three million hats a year and employed 5,000 Philadelphians. Unfortunately by 1971, Stetson hats went out of fashion and the factory closed. Personally, I blame the Kennedy brothers. Their taunting preference for a hatless head sent the hat industry into a downward spiral that it has never recovered from. Now a brief intermission, in which the Campbell kids discover that mother knows best. Mmm, good! Johnny came calling one Sunday, the girl of his dreams was so sweet. She served him some wonderful dishes, mm, but he found the meal incomplete. No soup? Good day, Irene, good day, goodbye, Eastside. To get the punch of soup for lunch, I'll seek another bride. Oh, what a wailing and sighing. Oh, what shall I do, Mother dear? Just reach for some soup from the soup shelf. You'll soon have your Johnny back here. Did someone say soup? What a dick. Who cares if Johnny didn't get any soup with his meal? Anyway, let's talk about John T. Dorrance. Where would Campbell's soup be without John Thompson Dorrance? I'll tell you where. It would be a canned fruit stand on the side of the road that you pass on your way to Wildwood. Before Dorrance, the company was called the Joseph A. Campbell Preserve Company. But after Dorrance developed the method to can condensed soup, he took over the company as well as every pantry in America. And all he did was realize that to condense the cans, more water had to be removed from them. Kudos to him. Where would our culture be without canned soup? And now we are at the end of our tour. Mary, Christy, and Taylor left out several important people because they were too cold and lazy. Their most embarrassing omission was Frank H. Fleer, the inventor of bubble gum. Number two was C. Dolores Tucker, civil rights icon, rap music skeptic. She was the first black woman appointed as the Pennsylvania Secretary of State. And then we have Cecilia Bowe. Alexander Milne Calder, Benjamin Sheeb, Al Reach, Eldridge Reeves Johnson, and David Smurl. We'll be in Bridesburg next week. Hope you can join us again. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Or don't. I really don't care but Mary does and makes me say it. Ta-ta.